The Ukrainian Defense Forces continue to defend the city of Toretsk and the settlement of New York in the Donetsk region. The Russians are showering Ukrainian positions with aerial bombs, conducting assaults with small infantry groups on mopeds, bicycles and miracle machines. But Russian tanks have not been seen on the battlefield for a long time. This was stated on air by Yegor Fiasov, the chief sergeant of the 109th Brigade of the Strike UAV Company of Ukraine. As a general rule, all territorial changes are commented on by the general staff. But I will say for myself that Toretsk, New York, is not far from it, where our brigade serves. Our brothers, who are located directly in New York, our armed forces continue to defend there. We keep in touch with our allied brothers because they also fly FPV drones and bombers. They use certain strategic points as well as enterprises located directly in New York as well as other strategic points. It is very difficult for them because the enemy, in addition to artillery, showers them with aerial bombs, fabs. About 50 of them can arrive in a day, Fiasov emphasized. According to the military man, the enemy continues to use the tactics of assaults by small infantry groups, but Russian tanks have not been seen on the battlefield for a long time. They disappeared because, given the advantage of Ukrainian defenders in FPV drones, tanks immediately burn. Fiasov also said that the enemy moves around on mopeds, bicycles, various types of buggies, golf carts. The Russians also cut off the roof of the Ziguli to jump out of the vehicle faster and hide in the plantings from Ukrainian FPV drones. We even hit such miracle machines. Almost every enemy crew has such smart watches that report that an FPV drone is flying somewhere 200 to 300 meters away and they, like a bullet, run into the plantings, saving their lives. Nevertheless, we burn this equipment, cars, armor and everything else. Every 50 meters on all roads, enemy equipment is burned. The military man added, According to Fiasov, if we evaluate the enemy's resources in the Pokrovsky direction, then judging by what was seen on the drone monitor, the Russians are suffering huge losses. I will say the words, not as sedatives or pills, but as what the chief sergeant sees directly on the battlefield. The enemy is suffering significant losses. The main roads, which are three to seven to five kilometers from the line of combat contact, have now become lines of death for the enemy. They have lost a huge amount of armored vehicles, automobiles, self-propelled artillery units, tanks. In recent months, a lot of all this has been destroyed, he emphasized. The military man added that, indeed, Russian troops continue to put pressure, driving their infantry in small groups to meaty assaults, using aircraft and aerial bombs. Ukraine has beaten Russia at sea without any warships, a remarkable achievement. But that doesn't mean conventional warships are obsolete, and it's certainly no reason to abandon aircraft carriers, according to former British naval officer Tom Sharp in The Telegraph. First, the Russian Black Sea Fleet was severely limited by its need to operate from bases very close to Ukrainian-controlled territory. Sevastopol and Novorossiysk are within range of Ukraine's arsenal of ground-based drones and Western-supplied missiles. Most of the ships destroyed by Ukrainian drones and missiles were hit while they were on board or at anchor. Secondly, the Black Sea does not create very large waves. A high-speed sea drone is theoretically faster than a ship. The conditions of the Black Sea give the Ukrainians an advantage. Third, in naval warfare, it is critical to have access to airborne radar that can cover hundreds of miles of sea. Radar on a ship cannot see low-flying objects or objects floating beyond its horizon. Russia has been unable to deploy any of its Tupolev 142 maritime patrol aircraft to the theater of operations. It needs them all in the north to ensure the safety of its nuclear deterrent submarines. The Russians lost a precious A-50 radar surveillance plane over the Sea of Azov in January and then another deep in Russian airspace in February. This means that Russia's Black Sea Fleet cannot monitor the movements of Ukrainian drones or grain ships in the Western Black Sea. With the proper radar picture from the air, Russia would detect drone attacks as soon as they left the harbor or even earlier and they could then be intercepted long before they reached their targets. NATO is unlikely to carry out such attacks. This is one of the main reasons why navies need aircraft carriers to carry radar planes, which are the only way to scan large areas of sea and sky. 
The alternative is airbases on land, but these cannot move, making them perfect targets for drones and missiles. In any naval war, there may not be a single land base available. Fourthly, the Black Sea Fleet ignores one of the basic principles of Navy maneuver. Echeloned defense. Anyone who suggests that Ukraine's success with land-based attack drones will change the nature of naval warfare and or make the Navy obsolete either doesn't understand the Black Sea, the general nature of naval warfare, or actually wants a Navy budget. The same goes for many critics of aircraft carriers. Sharp concluded.